Now, in this week's Let's Talk Some Star Wars, we're going to be taking a look at the results of, and your comments from, the poll that asked the question, how do you feel about Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, the new land or expansion at Disneyland, and that will be coming soon to Disney World as well. And before we get to what you all had to say, I'll give you a very brief initial summary on how I feel about it, by just firing off a string of questions at myself, starting with the one that seems to be the most popular complaint by some fans, that being, Am I upset that it's set in the sequel trilogy era and not in the original or prequel trilogy? Well, no, not really upset. Disappointed maybe, but not upset. Because, as I've discussed in other videos, you do have to keep in mind that they picked this time period for Galaxy's Edge before The Force Awakens ever came out, back when they were no doubt banking on the success of this new trilogy, and there's this part of me that really can't fault Disney for making a park based on the Star Wars time period they're creating, but I also can't fault fans of the previous eras, or the prequels and original trilogy, who maybe have no interest in Galaxy's Edge because it's not in the time period they would prefer. That being said, do I think it looks amazing for what it is? Yeah, absolutely. Now, do I personally have interest in going? Sure, but it's not a burning desire, and if I never get there, so be it. Would I be more inclined to go if it was set in the original or prequel trilogy era? Yeah, a little bit more, but I'm not a big theme park guy. One of the big draws to this is that it's supposed to immerse you in Star Wars, but to me it looks more like you'll just be immersed in giant crowds of people, waiting in lines, and that's just not my thing. Anyway, let's now move on to the results of the poll, and we'll see that for 32% of people, this just isn't something they're into. 25% then say they'll probably go and see it someday, and another 19% think it's just too expensive, which leaves 14% saying it looks amazing and they can't wait to go, and then finally 10% who dislike it or just refuse to ever go to it. Okay, now let's get to your comments, which will be a blend of both positive and negative remarks. And as usual, some comments I'll just read, while others I may briefly comment on myself. And of course, some were picked because they were highly rated, others hand-selected by me, and others still were just picked from the crowd. But, as we always do, we'll start with the top-rated comment, which this time came to us from James Pacheco, who said, I've seen footage of it. I won't lie, it looks cool, but I doubt I'll ever set foot in there. It seems like a waste of an amazing opportunity. I don't mind the sequels being present within it, despite the fact I'm not a fan of them, but a so-called Star Wars land needs to have prequel and original content for me. It could be so much more than it is. It would attract a great deal of fans if it had iconic locations like Moss Eisley Cantina, Endor Bunker, Echo Base, Lars Homestead, Emperor's Throne Room, Cloud City Carbon Freezing Chamber, Dagobah Cave, Yoda's Hut, Jedi Council Chambers, some Temple Rooms, Chancellor's Office, and many more. Aside from the life-size Millennium Falcon and the Hondo Anaka animatronic, look like the best things in there so far. Seriously, who doesn't love Hondo, lol. And yeah, who doesn't love Hondo? But anyway, instead of just trying to make some sort of generic location or part of a new planet that no one actually cares about, though they're making all sorts of books and comics about it to try and get people excited, and it won't stun me when they at the very least mention the planet in episode 9, I think it makes more sense to give you different glimpses of many different areas or planets set over the different time periods. You're going to appeal to a much broader audience, and it'll just be cool to see some of those moments that are classic to Star Wars fans. I get that you want to make this where you can walk in your own footsteps or whatever they said, but to me, I'd rather relive the moments of my favorite heroes, to be honest with you. Alright, now onto this comment from Eli Baza, who said, As a lifelong Star Wars fan, I was ecstatic when I first heard about it, but then I slowly began losing interest through time, partly because of the sequel trilogy's disappointments and Lucasfilm's handling of the criticism, and partly because the things I've seen from it over the past couple weeks have looked very bland and uninteresting. Not to mention expensive, and honestly, I don't have any drive to go there despite it being only like 30 minutes from where I live. So far, the only things that even remotely catch my interest are the Hondo Anaka animatronic, and again, who doesn't love Hondo? And the life-size Falcon, but I don't think it'll be worth my time and money just for that. Moving on now to this comment from Fatboy Genius, who said, If I went, I would use the word youngling. And I think he's referring to the fact that there was this rumor or report that you couldn't say youngling in the park because of, well, what Anakin did in a certain scene in episode 3. But that's been reported as completely false. You can say youngling at Galaxy's Edge if you want to. Moving along now to this comment from Mitchell Peters, who said, I love the idea, but sadly enough, I live on the other side of the globe. So the cost for the park plus the money it takes to get there makes it ridiculously expensive. Then there's this comment from Darth Enigma, who said, You're missing the can't go used all my money on pizza option, my dude. And absolutely, for a lot of people, especially those overseas, but even for those 
here in the U.S. who live nowhere near Florida or California and will have to spend money on travel and accommodations, one of the biggest things that will keep a lot of fans away will be the cost. All around, this will not be a cheap experience. Okay, now into this comment from Parax1423 who said, Missed opportunity to have a Harry Potter world-esque Jedi Temple Academy attraction where real Jedi teach you how to build lightsabers instead of some scavengers not from the movies named Gatherers. Or how about Hoi Yang teaches you how to make a lightsaber, the droid from the Clone Wars who taught the younglings, if I can say that word, how to make lightsabers. If they can make some crazy animatronic Hondo, why not a droid that helps you build a saber? I don't know, sounds pretty cool to me and ties back into previous lore. Next up now, this comment from Young Hong, who said, Although I fall under the looks amazing category, I still think it could look better from what I've seen. I want Jar Jar to be walking around. And you know what? Even though I neither love nor hate Jar Jar Binks, this isn't actually a bad idea, even though I think you may have been joking. I mean, he was made for kids, and he's apparently George Lucas's favorite character, right? And the last we saw him, in the canon at least, which was the book Aftermath, or the third one in the series, I think, He'd pretty much become a gesture of sorts, and was living on the streets of Theed, I believe, somewhere on Naboo at least. And so, why couldn't he have just made his way to Batu at some point, where he entertains the children of the city? I mean, I think that's about the best fate for the character, both in and out of the canon. Alright, now into this comment from YTCTC1, who said, It looks incredible, and I'm saving up to go in the near future. While I haven't been a huge fan of the sequel trilogy, I don't hate it either, Making the land be set in this era is the kind of extra world building the sequels need a bit. It seems like it was created by fans and fits perfectly in the Star Wars universe despite it being an entirely new planet with all the tiny details and whatnot. Also, there are some complaints that it's not in the OT prequel era, but I think that putting it in a less developed era is an effective way to craft an original experience without much being shoehorned in. This isn't a land about Star Wars, this is a land in Star Wars. And you do make great points here, and it's really all about what you want out of a Star Wars land. A new experience, or to see or be in the moments of the heroes of the past. That's really what it boils down to, personal preference. Next up here, this comment from Ghost World who said, Perks do nothing for me. No matter how much they want to say, oh it's canon, you're part of the story, eh, no. I don't really want to spend money on days of my life sitting in a ride that some pimply-faced teenager is going to be controlling to try to convince myself that I'm immersed. I find my immersion in Star Wars through the books, comics, internet trolls, and movies. Funny enough, I love conventions and celebration, but to me a theme park has absolutely no draw. I don't go to Six Flags to feel like I'm part of a DC comic. I never felt feelings like, wow, now I know how Batman feels. No, I just leave tired, wallet empty, and having 70% of my time spent in a line. And, you know, I do tend to feel kind of the same, though I don't think I'm quite as anti-park as you seem to be. But, like I basically said at the start, I don't exactly enjoy being crammed into huge crowds. It's really not my thing. But I did have an absolute blast at Celebration this year, and there was quite a crowd there. Because everyone around me was a huge Star Wars fan, and I had something in common with everyone I struck up a conversation with, and I just got to do what I love to do the most, talk some Star Wars with people. However, somewhere like Galaxy's Edge, which is of course going to have Star Wars fans there, but there are also going to be a lot of people just there to be there, and not so much Star Wars fans, and I don't want to sound like a cold-hearted bastard or anything, but I don't know how immersed in Star Wars I'll feel when I'm surrounded by screaming children and people who don't know the first thing about Star Wars. Okay, now let's move on to this comment from B.D. Ziegler, who said, Last year my wife and I visited the Wizarding World of Harry Potter at Universal Studios for the first time. We spent two full days walking through the two parks, eating, shopping, trying out the wand spots, and looking at all the Easter eggs. For me, it was an amazing experience. Every inch of the park was made with love, amazing attention to detail, and care for everything from hardcore fans to the casual movie fan to enjoy. It brought the magic world to life in a way I didn't think could be done. That being said, after watching the review videos and reading about the attractions, I find Galaxy's Edge to be almost the complete opposite. It feels like the park was designed by someone who'd heard of Star Wars and was asked to make a off-brand theme park, but it has none of the magic or charm of the galaxy far, far away. In a way, it's a wonderful allegory for the new trilogy as a whole, as they seem to completely forget what made us fall in love with Star Wars in the first place, and instead gave the fans an empty shell which looks like Star Wars, but at its core is empty. Okay, now let's get to a couple comments from people who have been there, starting with this one from 101 Maj, who said, I went with my friends and it was cool, but it's kind of small and there isn't much other than the merchandise and food that's pretty much microwavable. 
The blue milk tasted like frozen gogurts. The cantina was really cool, but it was kind of small. The best part, though, was the stormtroopers and Kylo Ren walking around. The Millennium Falcon ride was great, but it does have your neck hurting afterwards. And then this comment from Trevor Cameron, who said, I can't wait to go again. The place feels like you're walking onto a set, especially the marketplace. Everyone talked to me and my friend in character never breaking once. I was honestly floored by my experience. Which brings us to our final comment from Nicholas Polgson, who said, Not my thing, but I don't begrudge anyone for liking it. And I couldn't agree more. If it's your thing, and you can't wait to get there, then I hope you get there soon, and you have an amazing time, and that it's the Star Wars adventure of your dreams. But if you think it's just a shameless cash grab, and you refuse to go, I get that too. And though I freaking love Star Wars, I don't really know if it's for me. Yeah, I'll probably go there someday, because my fiance is dying to go and we've talked about going to Disneyland or Disney World for our honeymoon. And there's a good chance I'm going to get there one day or another, but I'm in no rush. And if I do get there one day, I'll certainly give you my opinion of it firsthand. Well, that's all I've got for you this time. Now it's your turn to tell me what you think. Are you excited for this and can't wait to go? Have you been there already and what did you think? Have any of the reviews of it that have come out since it launched changed your mind on it one way or the other? Or is this maybe just not your thing? Or is it... Not being in the original or prequel trilogy era turned you off from it. Whatever it is, let me know what you think in the comments below and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.